and welcome to the Zoom Room sessions as part of our Thriving Tribe project. I'm David Francis Moore and this is my colleague. Juliet. And today we are joined by Phelan Cannon and Gary Keegan from Broken Talkers. Broken Talkers is one of Ireland's leading theatre companies making socially charged and form-busting theatre that challenges and inspires audiences at home and around the world. Phelan and Gary, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Bye. Gary, you want to be the talker? Yeah, for the moment. Um, yeah, I guess we uh, we describe ourselves in, a, in 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 different ways. It depends really who's asking. Um, so we make theatre. Um, we make film occasionally. Uh, we are collaborative producers of of theatre. So we work collaborative co collaboratively with people. So. Um, in a way that we're very uh, committed to working with other people to 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 make to make work. So we're collaborative um, artists, um, and yeah, I think we're we're. That, that I suppose that, that there's some of the ways in which we would describe ourselves. Thank you, Caleb. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, um, well, I describe myself as an artist uh, foremost. Um, and a storyteller i think that's the that's the thing that uh, gary and i uh, strive to, to do to tell stories and to, to, i suppose to find different ways of telling those stories and to find stories that um have yet to be told so an artist slash storyteller yeah i, I it, 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 to, to me i kind of i, I kind of stumbled into this profession I would say um, it certainly was it certainly is not in my DNA and um, it's certainly not part of my family tradition in any way shape or form to be working in the arts um, I, I don't know where it comes from but I suppose I'm driven in a way by a, a kind of a search for truth um, if, if that sounds quite pretentious but um, I think it's. I think it is correct to say that I'm kind of looking for ways of expressing, ways of exposing the truth. Um, and I think what drives me, I suppose, is a, a, a kind of a, a need for greater sort of access and and participation in the arts as well. So um, maybe because of the, you know, the background that I'm from um maybe where arts wasn't so kind of readily accessible um maybe i've got a little bit of a chip on my shoulder about that and a, a lot of what motivates me is to improve access and to create opportunities and spaces for people who don't normally have those opportunities to to, to be creative and to to tell their stories so i think that's that's what motivates me mainly cool and that obviously feeds into the work of Broken Talkers. Yeah, work, I, I, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I think it does. Um, again, I don't think it's anything Phelan and I ever necessarily sat down and kind of, like we never wrote a manifesto per se, but I think we were always, because we studied together in college, we were, <laughs> we, we were probably the only two people who would work with us. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, so we kind of we kind of gravitated toward each other um, because we were kind of contrarians and 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 slightly I wouldn't say unpopular but certainly we kind of we tend to we we tended to get on better with each other than other people um, and the I suppose the the vision and the direction from Broken Talkers was kind of born out of this want to be. Um, I suppose just to do things differently to what everyone else around us was doing. So for a long time, that became the sort of, that became the benchmark. Just look at what other people are doing and, and do the opposite. Um, so I, I think that's, but, but yeah, we've never sat down and kind of written a manifesto of what, what it means to, to, to be broken talkers. It just, um, it just kind of 
happened? Um, well, like Gary, I mean, Gary and I come from a very similar uh, background. And I think the first time I was in the theatre, I was 17, um, to see Philadelphia Here I Come at the Abbey. Um, it was on my leaving cert certificate that year. So that was the reason why I was there. But um, that's, that's rather late for someone to be going to the theatre for the first time at 17. So um, like Gary said, access to, to the arts um, was something that was difficult growing up for whatever reason. Um, but on a very supportive family. And they, you know, they, 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 they saw that um, I had this... Um, hunger or or want to uh express myself so in artistic fashion so um i remember i got my ghetto blaster um in 1987 uh, with my michael jackson bad album um and now, <laughs> now whatever i know yeah i know maybe i shouldn't mention that but um i remember getting my, my ghetto blaster and my my blank cassette tapes and um just had to tell stories and record myself telling stories and it was something that I, I kind of collated over the years it was just me telling stories so again storytelling was something that was um quite important to me and i enjoyed performing as well um so i never really wanted to do anything else other than tell stories and, 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 and possibly perform so that was kind of something that was that was there from as long as i can remember so the support of my, my parents to get me to a post-leaving cert course and to college to, to, to eventually in university in the UK, um, that support mechanism was, was hugely important and uh, still continues today. But um, yeah, meeting Gary was, was, was hugely, well, obviously very important, but it was, it was, it was, a, it was a big deal. It was a, it was a kind of momentous moment. And then when we went to university together in, in the UK, that's really where um, we started to figure out a methodology that how we'd like to make work together. So in our post-leaving cert course, um, where we first met, it was kind of to get to know each other. As Gary said, we, 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 we gravitate towards each other. And um, we had kind of uh, very strong beliefs about theater, probably quite naive at the time, but, um, uh, I know that neither of us were really happy um, or interested in the work that we were subjected to. And when we eventually went to university, um, that just kind of took the blinkers off and, and really um, we were subjected to different ways of making work. And re really our time in university has, has shaped us as artists and, and absolutely um, is a kind of cornerstone to how we make work today. Since mid-March, we've been working um, mostly from where we currently are, which is, in my case, the kitchen table, in Phelan's case, case his, his beautifully appointed living room. Where are you? No, I'm upstairs. Are we upstairs? Yeah. Bedroom, yeah. Yeah. Nice, oh, nice. fireplace mm. and all is lovely. Mm. Yeah. Um, so this is where we work currently. Uh, like most people globally, we're kind of, if you're lucky enough to have work, it's from home a lot of the time. Um, no, no, like in normal times, um, we have an office uh, in in a complex in Aaron Street in Dublin, Dublin One, um, where we do most of our writing and planning. Um, so we're there kind of maybe 75% of the time. Um, the, the more exciting place to be for us is in the rehearsal room. Um, so, you know, we're there occasionally when we're, obviously when we're rehearsing, when we're de practically developing work. Um, so that could be like, you know, between, between kind of 10 and 15 weeks of the year, you might be there if you're lucky. Um, and then, um, we'd spend obviously a, a portion of our time kind of in theatres as well. So when we're kind of producing and staging and presenting work and, um, We've been quite fortunate in the last um, ten years to be to, to have the opportunity to travel quite a lot as well. So there would be a, a, um, quite a bit of time outside of the the, the country as well, um, in all sorts of strange and wonderful places. So it's a kind of
kind of uh, it's a bonus as well to, to the to have to yeah the opportunity to travel and and see a lot of the world and, and meet a lot of cool people you know and present to different audiences who um don't have any reference point for who you are so it's not your friends and family it's not your peers it's complete strangers who are kind of separated by language and culture and then the work your work has to kind of has to stand on its own two legs you know big style well, when we first returned to dublin after our uh, three years in university um you know we had ambition to to make work that kind of reflected the work that we were subjected to when we were experienced in the uk and um I suppose our entrepreneurial hat went on very early as 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 artists in that we we walked up to project art center and we knocked on the door uh, to the artistic director at that point was kathy mccardle and we said we want to be artists in residence here um and she was like i don't know who you are um but i like your confidence and um we ended up making two pieces of work there over the course of like an eight-month period. And it was that kind of um, confidence in what we could do, but also, you know, we, we wanted to succeed as artists. We wanted to, to, um, to, be, to, be, to be in this, to be in this um, working environment for as long as we possibly could and, and to be successful at it. So, well, we also wanted to work to our work to tour. We also wanted to make work. You know, we, we were always a company, you know, with an international outlook. We always wanted our work to not just be uh, Irish based, but but to travel. So we immediately start to uh, identify art, other artists um, who we um, admired, and we we try to connect with them. So after Kathy McCardle had left Project Art Center, Art Center, uh, Willie White then. Um, took over um, the running of the building and the artistic program there. And we immediately, with the help of Neve O'Donnell, started to form kind of an interesting collaboration with Project Art Centre. I started to solidify that as, a, as, a, as that building. I mean, it was Project Art Centre is the, uh, you know, it, it's, it's where contemporary theatre makers want their work to be performed. It's where contemporary practitioners uh, want to be associated. So. Our relationship or project started to grow when Willie White um, began to to work there, and our collaboration with Willie and Neve O'Donnell was was hugely important for Gary and I to kind of give us a, a um, the next steps up up the ladder. So with Neve and Willie, we started to identify companies abroad that we wanted to work with. So Gob Squad, who are Berlin-based British German company. Um, we really wanted to spend some time with them and again the, collab the collaborative kind of opening up uh, Willie then put us in touch with Madeleine Boughton who was then um, British Count, she's working for the British Council mm -hmm. and Madeleine kind of brokered a deal where Gary and I were able to go over to Berlin for a week, uh, see a premiere of a Gob Squad show and then work with them over the week, um, them as our mentors. So the, kind of, the, the collaborative um, support mechanism was something that we needed we needed pretty much immediately and it's something that has grown and grown and grown and grown since then and the work that we make um it's just so important to have as many good people as possible in the room with us um a lot of time gary and i feels like we facilitate rather than just write and direct and produce it feels like we facilitate with our artists to come to come in to a process with us and help us achieve it. So the collaboration is, but without it, we're nothing, to be honest. So it, it's hugely important to um, to acknowledge that, and we're constantly working on um, making those collaborations better all the time, and working with new people as well. I mean, we've got a core group of people that we work with, you know, quite a lot. But Gary and I feel it's very important that we. Um, don't become too insular and we invite people in who we've yet to work with before particularly yeah, yeah younger practitioners younger arts workers um just to um 
because well, it's important. It's important. It's important to give uh, people an opportunity because that's exactly what happened for, for, for the two of us. Because um, it was difficult coming back from the UK and having a very clear goal of what you wanted to achieve as an artist and not knowing if Dublin was going to be able to help you achieve that at that point. Um, I mean, the play was the king and queen. You know, the play was the thing. Um, we weren't playwrights. We we weren't making plays. So, how do we um, how do we make air work? How do we make uh, air work in a contemporary Dublin? Um, so these are things that we were trying to figure out. So our connections with as many like-minded people was was hugely important from day one. Um, it, it's it's something that we've gotten uh, that we I think we used to be really bad at. Um, I think we've gotten a lot better, a lot better in the last number of years. Um, so, so how? I mean, like, I mean, I'm not going to put a figure on it, but, <laughs> but um, suffice to say that whatever whatever we agree to do now, or whatever we propose to do, um, it is the time that's spent doing that um, correlates very clearly with. Um, with a financial, uh, you know, compensation. Let's just put it that way. So, um, my mother still asks me, and I think it's it's lovely. She, you know, I tell her I like. So, for example, um, I told her a couple of days ago I'm doing this interview. Um, on on you know, and she she, without fail, if I tell her anything I'm doing, she says, Are "You get paid for that," you know. So. I think that was something in the, in, the, in the beginning that we didn't always do. Um, in fact, for, for, for the first couple of years, we didn't pay ourselves properly. Um, but I think we did it because, um, well, first of all, I could speak personally. I didn't, I, like I was in a completely different situation then. I didn't have, you know, I didn't have a family. I didn't have those kind of responsibilities. So, and I, I was, I had other part-time jobs, so maybe I felt I could afford to spend time on this, on this kind of project with Phelan that I believed would, you know, kind of get me a little bit further along to that sort of financial kind of sustainability. That took, uh, like, you know, that took like maybe eight years before we could pay ourselves sort of regularly, sort of like consistently. Um, so there was a lot of work that we did for, for really rubbish money. But I think now it's like, you know, we kind of mirror the, you know, we kind of take a leaf out of the Arts Council's playbook in terms of, because they would be our primary funder, um, as would be the case for most kind of, you know, most, theatre practitioners um, and artists and I guess we just follow what they prescribe which is basically make sure that what, what you're what you're engaged in is kind of properly budgeted for and um, that, that that everyone is paid kind of you know equitably and fairly so but, but our, our, our time I think we, we certainly value it a lot more highly than we did um, in, in, in the initial stages um, and I think we, we, we find ourselves swatting away a lot of things that aren't, um, that, 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 you know, we, we used to spend a lot of times having meetings that really didn't need to happen and um, a lot of time, a lot of time was wasted. So I think we're, we've, we're kind of almost too busy now to, to en entertain uh, ourselves kind of talking around in circles. So everything we, every time we meet up, it's for quite a particular purpose, and we have a particular kind of uh, thing that we're working toward. So, it's um, paid. and it's paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we do less of the kind of oh, you know, let's meet this person and talk about whatever you know, v vague thing. Um, if there's so, if if 
if if it's something we're genuinely kind of interested in and it sort of it it's going to benefit us or we see a benefit then we'll certainly have a meeting um but we do less we do less now of the sort of just you know just meet up or just kind of you know spend time chatting um because we're too busy now for that yeah i think this i, I think it is um it, the entrepreneurial spirit is kind of goes hand in glove with being a freelance artist um if you want to get to a place where you know it, it's it's paying um now there'll always be there'll always be a, a, a significant and real issue around how much or how little we actually make for what we do um but it's just, maybe it's a separate issue to this conversation but um the it's about thinking outside the box uh and and the one the ones who the ones who can think outside the box um i think tend to um provide themselves with i suppose a broader base of kind of supports so it's not just the arts council i think that's a, the first thing to mention is that and it shouldn't just be the arts council so in the case of broken talkers it's you know that there's there is the public um funding the the, the 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 arts council funding there's local authority funding that generally tends to make up about one third of our annual turnover um the other money is raised through partnerships through commissions for work and through residencies that is that can be or doesn't always have to be connected to projects but could be separate projects that are not production based but more research and, and public engagement based if that's something that you're you've you as an artist are interested in doing um there's the touring the international touring um which has probably been the thing that's kind of saved our skin um more more than anything in terms of funding other than the arts council um that's you know that's easier said than done obviously but um that's so that kind of entrepreneurial spirit it, um, if you like, you know, so you don't learn that. I mean, we didn't learn that in college. Um, that was something that we kind of cottoned on to as we went along that um, this isn't going to work if we just focus on, you know, getting a, 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 an annual grant from the Arts Council. It's never going to be what, what again, what, what, what we, what we all the position that we want to be in i guess is to have this sustainability and and this ability to plan you know at least two years in advance which you know which fortunately now we're, we're able to do um but i think without that without that sort of cre the, the element of creativity in 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 how the the, the use to you support yourself or you attract investment to to, to you you need to be creative with that as well. So obviously there's, you know, there's, there's philanthropy, there's, um, you know, there's donations, there's kind of, you know, uh, friend schemes, all that sort of stuff. You have to do all of these, everything. Um, if, you know, provided it, it, it kind of feels um, like you're, I, I, I don't know, you need, I suppose you need to be offering something in terms of the friend schemes. You, you need to have a bit of a, you need to be producing work that that they can come and see in the opening night or whatever it is um so you, you need to you, you need to look at every aspect you need to email people all over the world and say you know and give them kind of 
regular updates as to what you're producing and and when the time comes to invite them to Dublin you you know you contact Culture Ireland and you ask them about you know providing um, financial support for this presenter or, or that presenter to come to see the work or you link up with the Irish Theatre Institute to do the same and um, so yeah you, I, I guess it's 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 crucial actually and it it's there i mean it is there it's it's there in spades you know we're all doing it well it's, it's hugely important so i mean we, we work closely with project art center um with the promotion of our work and um, also it, it's it's really important in our budget lines to have somebody um working on the uh, on, on the marketing side so I know that we're 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 currently working um, with a person right now um, who obviously we've no shows to sell unfortunately uh, for the next the next while. But I suppose what Gary and I like to do is to work close with somebody, so um, they're always invited into the room to to look at the work really early on, so they get a really uh, clear sense of what we're trying to achieve. So just as that's that's hugely important. It's not just about employing somebody to write a press release and um, you know send off some emails. You really need uh, the person to get a real sense of who we are, what what the work is, and why we make it. So trying to trying to um, trying to form those relationships in a similar way that we would even working with it would affect with another creative person, with another artist that really the, the, the rehearsal room is a revolving door, that it's important that whoever we collaborate uh, comes into the room and is there with us. Gary, you wanna add anything? Thank you. You're on mute. The, 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 the network is really important. Um, the network that we've built up over the past 10, 15 years is, is really important and still uh, very valuable to us um, and growing all of the time. So maintaining that ne network, uh, keeping that network kind of alive through updates and through kind of um, reaching out um, is really important. So may I just clarify? So it's um, when you talk about network, you're, you're not just talking about the people, you know, um, on a, you know, in a, you're also talking about the digital domain yeah and maintaining no, absolutely, the digital domain ab ab yeah. absolutely so the the, the, the you know that we, we are we, we you know we are active on on social media we do update um our, our audiences there kind of regularly uh, um, on what's going on whether it's productions or whether it's any sort of news that's of um of note um and our audience is quite engaged, um, which is good. So, yeah, we work. You know, we work. Um, we work on that. Uh, it's quite easy, actually. It's not not a big. It's not a big amount of work. It's just you know, it's just it needs to be consistent. I think is the thing. Um, but then also the, also the kind of industry network as well, the professional network. You know, um, you know, they they receive obviously the social media updates as well. Um, but they would receive also emails and, and, and more personal uh, correspondence from us, more targeted to what we think they would want to hear from us about a new show and development or about a new idea for a show or, um, or about a, a, a show that we'd like to tour, um, you know, or any awards that we might have picked up, letting them know about that. So, so yeah, so it, it that, I mean, you could make, yeah, you, you could, it, it would be very easy to be very insular and very kind of um, closed off. Um, but that's not, that's not going to get you very far. It's, I don't know, I'll speak for myself. It's, it's something I have, to, I have to kind of, um, I have to make myself say, uh, it, does, it doesn't come very easily. Uh, but it's something that I, I it, it's quite deliberate. Um, so a long time ago, one of our tutors in, 
in in university who's of, who's also a theatre maker. Um, I remember we I don't know if Elam if you were there, but but she was talking about how she describes herself, and she said um, I describe my, so, so she was directing this particular show that we were in, but we said so are you a director or a writer or what are you how do you are you perform or what are you and she said no I just describe myself as an artist and then she talked a little bit about why you know and um the fact that her practice takes in lots of different sort of methods and, and modes of presentation modes of work and artist just seemed the most kind of fulsome and and accurate description um so i think from then on um i kind of took that on as a sort of well that's what i'm gonna that's how i'm gonna describe myself um but it's not it, it doesn't always feel really comfortable to say it either and i don't know why that is maybe it's a, it's maybe it's just a little kind of psychological thing in me um, but yeah, that's how I describe myself. Uh, I don't know. What about you, Phelan? I'm, I'm very comfortable describing myself as an artist. Good man. <laughs> so, yeah, it's what I am. It's for all the reasons that Gary, that Gary said. I mean, I, I do remember that, um, person saying that, and that certainly resonated with me. Um, and be, yeah, because we, we, we because we work in so many different mediums, it's to me, it, it, encapsulate, it encapsulates what we do. And I don't know, I, I, I've, always, I've always tried to find a creative and artistic way of expressing um, when things are pretty bad, you know, in life. It's always been my outlet, so. That's why I think I'm also very, I'm just comfortable with calling myself an artist. But when I do, when I say that to people, they, they immediately ask me, oh, what do you paint? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I, that's kind of what I mean. So if my, which has happened in the past, you know, my daughter would say like, you know, what do you do for a job, daddy? And I say, I'm an artist. And she'd go, but you're a really rubbish drawer, so what are you talking about? You're not an artist. So. Yeah, I, I think that kind of balance sort of blend between sort of practical and academic, um, where we studied, I think, um, cer certainly the, um, certainly the emphasis was on the, the practical. Um, not not to say that there wasn't any theory or academia. Um, you know, obviously it was a bachelor's degree. There needed to be a certain amount of academic study, but um, it was very much uh, it was very much couched in the in the practical. You know, so it was through the practical that we discovered the theor theoretical, if you like. Um, and so I would say for, I would say that would certainly be one thing, you know, um, uh, and then in terms of how that's achieved, certainly, I, you know, certainly deeper and more meaningful engagement with industry professionals on, on a practical basis was another thing that we benefited hugely from. So most of the people that came in to teach us or to work with us were like proper practitioners. artist practitioners, mm -hmm. you know, um, who are, who are not kind of winding up their practice or not like that they used to do a little bit back in the seventies or whatever, like they were still kind of doing the do, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so, so their approach was very much about how to, or ways in which you can rather than you know um yeah, rather than the sort of theoretical um and then i guess our own artistic sensibilities come into play with this as well in that the um 
the, the methodologies that we that we learned and that we still use um are in, in terms of a contemporary a contemporary training or contemporary education in in theater making for example i'd like to see more emphasis on um on newer uh newer newer practices um rather than the traditional sort of um you know drama uh the traditional kind of staging of a play or um the traditional acting styles if you like there's 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 a bigger world out there there's a bigger definition of what art and performance and performance art can be and i think the the institutions the third level institutions um would be would do well to kind of broaden um or even even in certain cases narrow it down and just focus on what's new mm -hmm. you know which is the training that we received so you're, you're obviously always going to have to have the historical context and um, you're you're going to have to understand where the art originated um but to focus on i suppose what has led us to this point in terms of the art form and um, at its at its cutting edge and um, i think you could you could do away a lot with a lot of the um a lot of the kind of more traditional Tradition. kind of teaching and you could just focus in on what's going to propel the, what's going to propel this art form forward in the next 20 or 50 years yeah. rather you know so that's kind of what i feel they all do they all do yeah i'm not i'm not do. i'm not saying we're, we're on top of every single one of them as much as we should be but i mean certainly the aspiration um would be to really be awesome at all of those things uh there's, there's quite a few in there that we are awesome at um i think but quite a few as well that that we we could probably be better at um the self-awareness one kind of jumped out for me uh i <laughs> but <laughs> being self-aware <laughs> i'm i'm not really self-aware all the time no <laughs> uh, Phelan, Phelan was very aware of the fact that I'm not self-aware. <laughs> That's good. Then you're um, a good team. Yeah. Yeah. True. So. Yeah. But, brilliant. Thank you. Certainly, certainly, the first kind of six or seven, you know, I think we we are, you know, quite, quite on top of the first one was um, like identifying opportunities, wasn't it? Yeah, spotting opportunities. That's always something we've been quite good at. Would that, Even back the in top, the day, would that be in the top three? Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. Because you know, we're, you know, we're always looking for, yeah, we're we're always looking for what we can do for what for what we can make happen. You know, mm -hmm. always. Um. So that would be definitely in the top three, definitely. Then as well as just uh, ma making work that's accessible is 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 hugely. Um, that's something that that we've that we not always held. I remember being in university, uh, and you know, uh, oh, you know, don't worry about the audience. You know, I, I, don't, I don't, we don't care about the audience. Stupid things that you you think of when you're starting off and you're you're young, you're trying to figure things out. Um, and what we certainly learned on the way making work, and particularly in the way that we make work, is is to is, is to make the work as accessible as possible but for for that not to in any way hold us back and still make work that's accessible but also is is challenging um for the viewer and for the participant and to make something because we work a lot with um non-professional um practitioners in our work um and it's to create a create a creative environment that they're comfortable in but also a, a to make work that can be to make art that can that can stand up against anything else that's being made in the country at that time. Um, so accessibility um, is something that we've 
that we've harnessed. Um, and then our rigor to our work has, has manifested itself and grown over the years. It's something that we're, um, we work very hard. We work really, really hard. Um, and yeah, and I, I, think, I think we have a higher standard for ourselves than we, than we used to probably, yeah. Yeah, to the point it's quite, it, to the point where it can be quite difficult for people working with us because we will um, we'll constantly change our minds. And it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, I mean, changes, I always, I always hate that word. It's not, it's not changes, it's improvements. We're always looking to improve whatever it is. And um, that, yeah, that, that can be difficult uh, when decisions have to be made and it, it's kind of last minute. But um, I think we, we create an environment where people trust, trust us and we would never, you know, we would never drop them. We're always there to, to you know, to, to, to support and be there. But yeah, the rigor of the work is something that um, that's definitely got better with time. I mean, it's always been there, but again, it's figuring out, it's figuring out over the years through trial and error um, about how, how the work can get, how the work can be better. That's that's really that's really important for Gary and I on the work that we make. Um, it's important that we are stimulated and we are challenged ourselves. That's why formally our work can be quite different um, each time you make a piece of work. That's really important to us as well, that the work evolves. We're very lucky to, to have real champions of our work um, over the years. Um, and Project Art Centre has been a key uh, partner in all of that from Willie White, Neve O'Donnell, and to Key and O'Brien and Orla and everybody at Project from, you know, Kate and S, there's everybody from the box office staff, everybody in that building has been so supportive. But it's as easy as us, you know, for if, if, if Gary and I are questioning a piece of work or we've, we're a bit worried um, or there's an Arts Council question or, you know, a creative question, it's as easy as sending an email or lifting the phone up and, and ringing Key in a project or Willie White at Dublin Theatre festival or Ruth at Dublin Fringe or so we, we're very lucky that we have um, a lot of partners in place that, that that help us you know we haven't got all the answers Gary and I and because of the work that we make that where collaboration is hugely important again we've no problem um, asking for help and we've no problem asking uh, the people who who support us over the years to, to, to continue that um, that partnership, it's, it's hugely important. Gary, do you have anything to add, add to that, Ian? Yeah, I, I, I think that's, I think that's, there, there is a very, there is a very robust support network, um, uh, as Phelan said, between us and certain other institutions and, and artistic leaders, I suppose, in the country. Um, but I think there is also a support network of uh, peers as well, um, you know, people who, whose opinion creatively we we value um so that certainly helps um and then i also think our, our you know i think we receive a lot of support as well from our from home as well from our partners so um that's obviously been hugely important as well over the years um that they that they understand and appreciate that our jobs are our job is quite peculiar um and it involves weird hours and um, weird itineraries. Um, so that obviously is really important as well um, to have that support. One of the first, one of the very early shows that we were commissioned by by, by um, Project Arts Centre, which was a re result of that earlier collaboration with the British Arts Council that I mentioned, was a piece called In Real Time. And because we always wanted our work to travel, to tour, we decided, okay, let's make a piece of work that has to travel. It has to tour. So it was a piece of work that happened simultaneously in two different cities at the same time. So that's an example of where the, where the, the formal idea was the first thing and then the content happened. That isn't usually how Gary and I work, but formally we knew if we made a show that has to happen in Dublin and we get a partner in Paris, it means it's it's an international collaboration. 
so that that first piece of work in real time um ended up touring a lot around 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 europe and that kind of really was one of the kind of first stepping stones for us to become a company that regularly enough gets co commissioned from european partners so that that kind of that that um that ambition for the work to leave ireland was there very early and kind of that early decision that kind of early idea of making of of making a piece of work that has to have international partners really really did um it really worked for us so those kind of again those kind of risks are, are worth taking sometimes you know we we we, we highlighted a, a, an amazing company um called campo who are based in in um in, in belgium and they make amazing work so we decided, okay, let's let's do the show in Dublin. So what happens is that the audience turn up in Dublin at the Project Arts Centre, um, an actor comes out on the stage, and on the screen, um, there's a woman in an apartment in a, in a different city somewhere in the world, and these two strangers, unrehearsed, meet for the first time. So we approached a company that we were we absolutely loved. They they liked the idea and. They, they they supported us, and each each time we went somewhere, that was that was the same thing. We would we would we'd approach kind of artists and, and organisations that we were um, very fond of, and luckily they they listened. But again, I think a lot of that was because at that point there wasn't many Irish, there wasn't a lot of contemporary Irish work touring around Europe and the world. Yes, your your bigger you know Casey plays and all that stuff. And Beckett, all that amazing work tours all the time, but uh, more con more contemporary work, Irish contemporary work wasn't touring that much. So I think people were kind of interested in what these these this kind of new generation of Irish art artists were up to. Um, but that was definitely a, a very strategic plan of action that we took, and it is definitely um, that experience has definitely shaped how we. But it gave us confidence to approach other bigger institutions and ask for bigger support you know so um so, so having that plan um yeah it's, it worked for us well oh, there's no there's no necessity to to just focus on ireland it's such a small country mm. um population wise it's um you know you know the population of greater manchester essentially so you know it, it, it it's absolutely it's absolutely necessary to to view yourself as a global player artist. you know what i mean a, glo a global artist um and then you know with with the ease of communication you know it wasn't that easy when we started you know 15 20 years it wasn't that easy you know because people <laughs> you know, certainly huh? Pay phones. <laughs> yeah, pay phones, pay, pay phones yeah. Yeah, yeah, like re reverse charge calls to, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, to, to some presenter in Berlin. No, we never did that. But it's, it's much easier now to be, you know, to be really in touch with, you know, anyone, anywhere, and to, 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 to work out really complex things, whether it's, you know, working on scripts, you know, using kind of live, like like Google Docs, working on scripts in real time, working on budgets in real time, you know, booking, like, it's almost like they're beside you. So there's no, there's no impediment other than your your own kind of, what, what, what you know, you, what you think. And, and it's, it's, it's just, it just opens you up to a, to, to a, a just a, an amazing kind of a, a vast amount of opportunities um like they're not easily they're not easy to come by but they're, they're there you know and just quickly I, I i teach a course at new cd and um it, it was hugely important for me to to give the students an idea of other work that's happening around europe and the world so it, it's it's rare enough that we look at irish work it, it's mostly european uh, work that we look at and at the same time, um, I kind of see my role there as exactly what I experienced in university all those years ago. When I had a, a practitioner in the room with us, was I tried to impart methodology. I tried to impart this idea of, 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 of thinking bigger, thinking outside the box, and thinking of your career when you leave this building. 
and to use your time in university as this time to figure out who you are, what you want to do. And then the students are always, if Gary and I are making a piece of work at that time, and that usually happens, those things run, run, run side by side, I always invite the students in to see Gary and I in practice in the room with everybody else. So all those things um, I would wish were more solidified and much more um, driven when it came to third level education and that the organizations worked more with um, yeah, professionals and how they can help the next generation of artists coming up. Because that, that's, that's hugely important. It's, absolutely, like, it, it's, it's hugely important, particularly for an art form of theater, which is so slow to turn. Um, you need these new vibrant ideas happening or it'll just fall, it'll fall apart. And particularly now where, where no one knows what theater is gonna be like after this you know, post pandemic, mm -hmm. new audiences and a new way of, of connecting with audiences. Um, we, we, need, we, need, we need young people, uh, we need that energy. I need to harness it. Gary and I would, would put ourselves forward to, to, to a lot of mentoring schemes. Um, so we, 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 we kind of align ourselves with, with, with Dublin Fringe um, and kind of look to help emerging artists there. Um, I mean, we were quite lucky in that when we were in university in the UK, we, we didn't just have lecturers, we had practitioners, we had people who come in who made work and we got to know them and we were able to, you know, they became, eventually became friends. But these are people who were high, high established artists and we were, you know, Gary and I were able to finish up in, in, in university, they were, they were very accessible. And they were always there for Gary and I to kind of bounce ideas off, to 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 have a you know have a conversation, to to give out and moan, whatever it was, they, they were there to listen. And it's something that we we remember and we appreciate and something that we'd always always say that we we would we would like to do ourselves. Um it's a, it's unfortunate that you know to, to to me when you're you know to me when you're in that higher level education in, in those courses where you're in trying to become an artist or to work in the in in, uh, in in the arts world, it's it's just so important to use your time there to figure out what you want to do. I mean, it's so hard when you leave. I mean, that was uh, what was great for us is that we had a very clear vision uh, when we came out. We didn't know how to do it, but we had a very clear vision of what we'd like to do. And with that kind of clear vision, at least you've got a pathway or there's a, there's a map that you can that you can follow. Um, and then after that, it's about trying to align yourselves with as many people. That can help you make that happen. And what I would say to people, you know, who are about to come into the into the world, um, go and knock on those doors. You know, go and go and uh, contact these artists. I mean, there's no um, everything is it's 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 hugely it's hugely important to demystify the arts as well. That it is for everybody, and there's no, you know, um, it's about your commitments to to the work. And my thing is, anybody can help you get there. You just need to contact them, you know. And people tend to be okay, but, you know. They 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 do eventually get back to your emails and stuff. But also, it's about helping prepare these uh, these these people after after college, after university. That doesn't probably happen happen enough. And I always found it really helpful in university where. A practitioner would come in and tell us how fucking hard it is actually after the fact. You know, that kind of slap in the face kind of helped. Okay, right. He, you know, they have just said how difficult it is and they speak about how they kind of navigated around those difficulties. And that was much more um, important to hear than their, their CV or the reason why they made a decision in the show to use a dancer or, or whatever. Those formal ideas, you know, are great, but really the things that, that benefited us hearing these artists talk was about the realities of, of the world that we're in. And that definitely helped Gary and I to try to come up with some sort of strategic way of surviving as artists, but also making the work that we wanted to do 
in a country that, as I said, back in the early 2000s, there wasn't many companies making devised work at mm. that point. I'm not saying there wasn't any, but there wasn't many as, as, as there are today. So um, there's no real secret is the other thing. You just kind of have to go and do it, you know. You just kind of have to get out because it is hard. It is hard. And as Gary said, it took eight years before we were all be able to sustain ourselves. It took quite a long time before we were Arts Council funded. We had pockets of funding from different organisations, from Project Arts Centre to Dublin, to, to Dublin City Council. But with, with those small pockets of money, we had huge ambitions for the piece. And with that, with that big ambition, um, you know, people were always kind of, how did, how did you make that show on, on, on 50 on euro? euro? <laughs> yeah, you know, well, well, we did because we had to. And when you do give us more money, imagine what we would be able to do. So it's going to be hard regardless of what, but it's just about how you um, align yourself with the, with the right people. You know, find your tribe, which is hugely important. This has been the Zoom Room Sessions and this has been Broken Talkers. Gary Phelan, if people want to find out more about your work and what you do, what's your website, what's your handles? Uh, website is www.brokentalkers.ie um, We're on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Broken Talkers, on Twitter at Broken Talkers and on Instagram, Broken Talkers underscore Dublin. Brilliant. And thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you. Thank you.